All right, hello and welcome to Revved Up. It's a new week and a new episode as well as we continue taking you through different machines that are run by engines. Now, on the show this week, we are taking you through a couple of interesting machines as well, something to do with the history. We have a very interesting futuristic car. Shall talk about the price on the show as well and also take you through a new car. We are changing the trends. We have a car this week that pretty much can do everything. And I mean everything for the family and guess what celebrities are joining us on the show as well we shall be talking to one of those as he takes us through his or her cars let me just not let the cat out of the bag yet i'm welcoming you to the show as we take you through the biggest the biggest not open to debate by the way the biggest motor show in east and central africa i'm andrew kabura let's get this show started right now on this edition of revved up Car Care, brought to you by Shell Helix. This week's car care tip shows you how to change your tire quickly and safely. First, remove the hubcap if you have one and loosen the lug nuts using a wrench. You'll need to turn them counterclockwise, but do not remove them completely. Now, take out your jack and place it under the frame of the car near the tire and raise it until the tire is off the ground. lug nuts can now be removed completely and the tire is ready to come off. The new tire can then be put on the hub but make sure that the lug nut holes align with those on the tire. Put the lug nuts on but do not tighten them all the way just yet. As long as the wheel stays on it is tight enough. Lower the jack so that the car is resting gently on the ground and then tighten the lug nuts all the way. Then remove the jack from under the car. Once you've cleaned up your tools, you're ready to hit the road once again. Alright, so this week on Celebrity Rides, we are joined by Denzel, a man who represented this beautiful 256 in the Big Brother house. He came back, his career was shooting through the roof. TV, radio as well, definitely one of the biggest celebrities here in Kampala. Denzel, thank you very much for coming on the show, man. Uh, thank you for having me. It's a, it's a very great opportunity to be here. I want us to go back. A couple of years ago, uh, you were introduced mainly to the Ugandan limelight yeah. uh, through Big Brother Africa. Uh, just how important was that experience to, to your shooting up in terms of, you know, your jobs and uh, celebrity lifestyle? How, how important was the Big Brother house? Well, um, I mean, it's a, it's a great platform. Um, Big Brother is watched right across Africa and right across Uganda. Yeah. Uh, so coming back, I, I found that my brand had infiltrated from, you know, 10-year-olds to literally 70-year-olds. I used to find my mom's old friends and they're like, oh, Denzel! And I'd find, go to pick up my nephew from his kindergarten and they're like, Denzel! Yeah. 
So, you know, I made use of that, that brand, um, that, that, that big brand that was suddenly born out of it um, to join radio, TV and also start writing. Beautiful ride. Is it your Thank first car? How many cars have you driven and why did you get this very car? This is actually my second car. I used to own a Golf and I uh, moved on to this. Um, I never knew, I'd, I never had dreams of owning a car like this, um, but I went to a car bond. I wanted to buy a Mercedes um, <clears throat> C180, the compressors. And then I saw this car and then I sat in it, they opened the roof, I put on the engine, they like, gave me wow. a ride around and I said, you know what, <laughs> this is what this I'm going home with, this, this, this is my girl for a yes. while, yeah. So I fell in love with it. Well, what are the benefits though, as you're driving through town, when you're going to, to do gigs all over the place, yeah. uh, how much does it fit into your lifestyle and exactly what you can afford and what you want? Well, you see, one of the crucial things about being in the entertainment industry is having a visible brand. Um, I have a brand that's out on radio, TV, in the newspapers. Yeah. So why don't I have a brand that's out in the traffic as well? In the streets as well. So I find right now that there are a lot more people that actually remember me and they're like, oh, Denzel, uh, in contrast to when I'm driving a noticeable, uh, noticeable car. Yeah. Uh, but apart from that, um, I always used to ride bikes and I'm an outdoor person, so I love just being in with the elements, you yeah. know, the sun in my, my, my face, the air. So it, it, it's fun. It's just a fun car to drive. You meet a couple of guys sometimes and they say, this is what I look at before I get a car. Uh, this is what I consider for a car like this. Before you got this car, I know you like the beauty of the car. You, yeah. you like the, the open sunroof and everything. But yeah. what are those two, three factors you looked at first? before you picked a certain car? Well, I wouldn't say it's a perfect car. Um, fuel consumption in it is uh, terrible. It's an old car, so the, the engine is a little bit old. Yeah. It's from 2002. So, you know, the Germans hadn't perfected, um, you know, fuel management. It guzzles quite a lot. It's a 3.2 liter engine, pretty much what you find in a Prado or, you know, an X5. So it's a pretty big engine. It guzzles a lot. I feel the burden of it in contrast to my, my older car. So yeah. I think it's very important to take into what you can afford in terms of um, um, petrol. Apart from that, my maintenance is really um, really high. Um, the, the parts for it aren't as common as say a premium so I definitely have to pay premium price for, um, to have my, my, my servicing done. I think the only downside of it is I can't really hang out with all my boys. Yeah. There's only space for one person so <laughs> who's usually female. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, Thank you very much for coming on the show. No problem, we, we do appreciate and uh, we do hope uh, folks are going to love watching your car on Revd Up. Well it was a great it was an honor, an honor being here like I said before and I'm looking forward to the show as well. want to check out what other cars people are driving around here. So. Eerily reminiscent of a Star Wars clone trooper helmet, the Element Palazzo from the Austrian company Marchi Mobile is the world's most expensive and visually outrageous motorhome. On the outside, it appears as though a bus landed on top of a convertible and rather unsuccessfully fused with it. Fortunately, however, it's what's on the inside that counts and the Element Palazzo is bursting with decadence and comfort from every scene. Most recreational vehicles or RVs make long trips a mere bearable experience. But this $3 million ride brings the luxury of a palace to the open road. Crammed with all the amenities of a five-star hotel, the Palazzo features a respectable sky deck, a cocktail lounge, two flat-screen TVs and a fireplace. Instead of fold-out beds and lumpy cots, a plush master bedroom awaits, as well as a bathroom that most homes would envy. Perhaps to atone for the extravagant price tag, the Element Palazzo comes in several forms, including the option of a solid gold coating, reminding the outside world to take a second, third and fourth look as you drive by an outlandish and grotesquely lavish vehicle. The Element Palazzo shows that while money can't buy happiness, it can most certainly buy an excess of luxury.
Our guest this week is Gilbert Wavamuno, sales director of Spear Motors. We asked Gilbert to briefly tell us the history of Spear Motors. Uh, Spear Motors started in 1974, so it's over 40 years in business now. Uh, it's primarily an uh, automobile, basically distributor, with a range of products from Mercedes-Benz to Chrysler Jeep and uh, Dodge and also now Fuso. Let me tell you some things about Spear Motors that you may not already know. Uh, I'll start with the more recent news that uh, Fuso now is under the Daimler AG group meaning Fuso is now part of the family together with our existing brand like Mercedes-Benz. So we now are actually the official distributor for Fuso commercial vehicles and uh, Mitsubishi Fuso commercial vehicles and also for service and um, parts. Gilbert, how do you read the current trends in the Uganda motor industry from your perspective? Uh, the way I read the current trends in the Uganda motor industry is basically there is a shift towards people looking more and more at using new vehicles, especially in the commercial sector with trucks, because they're looking at the benefits of how do we save money. I mean, we buy something cheap, but it ends up costing us more to run, to keep, maintain, etc. Whereas you spend more buying something new, but you actually spend far less over the years. And when you compare both charts, graphs, you've spent less money buying a new vehicle a new truck, for example, and running it for 10, 20 years versus having bought five, six different used trucks along the same period. So the trend is now for a lot of transporters in that segment to move there. And then in the private sector, you find people showing more interest in new vehicles with the options for passenger vehicles, with the options of financing on the side where they're getting tired of all the headache. They, they want less hustle and bustle. They want to focus just on their work, but the car should do its job. So there's so much opportunity now to get the financing, buy a brand new vehicle, and there's quite a spread of vehicles now available that can work in this market. Now, if, if somebody is wondering whether they should buy a second hand or a new car, my advice would be, first of all, you have to look at the budget you have, to be honest. If your budget is extremely limited, then you would first look, let's say, at a second hand car. But when you look at a second hand car, also look at really what are you getting out of that second hand car and how do you plan on maintaining that second hand car. So you should try and get something which has some sort of certified history. Let me give an example that rather than just chasing that because it has the latest number plate, you would look at maybe this vehicle was imported brand new through an official dealer such as ourselves. The customer has maintained it for the last maybe five, six years very low mileage because usually you'd find the car has maybe only 30,000, 40,000. And then you look at the possibility of buying such a vehicle rather than going believing that a straight outward import would be better than something that's already ridden on our roads because you don't know whether the other used vehicle has been fully maintained wherever it came from. You don't even know if it was never written off in a bad accident and somebody just patched it together and sent it over. Uh, since there's no real control on what's coming in, you end up with a lot of vehicles which are either dangerous or will end up costing you a lot more. So when you make this decision, you should make it in a more informed basis, search around. Uh, for example, even on our website, we have a used section which you can click used cars to see what even we are offering or what our customers are offering to sell on that they bought maybe five years ago or even eight years ago. And the prices are, are much lower and they could be of interest. Then if you do have the, the budget, I would always say buy a new vehicle because there's less headaches. You have a factory warranty to cover you for maybe up to three years, depending on which brand you're buying from us. This is something which lets you do your job and the car just takes you from where you have to go and you get to enjoy even your drives regardless of the traffic. You get to enjoy going home or going to the office or going wherever you're going with a new car, knowing that you're not stressed about it randomly breaking down. Gilbert, thanks for being with us. Before you leave, anything else that you'd like to share? <laughs> Are there maybe some few last pointers which might be again summarizing some of the points I already mentioned earlier is that whenever someone looks at buying a vehicle, they should try and look more into what are they getting out of their vehicle, new or used? What features does it have? Do these features work? Because some people may not know what exactly the benefit of ABS is, which is the anti-braking system. But I mean, just to answer that, um, the benefit of that is when you hit the brakes hard in an emergency, you're still able to sw turn the steering wheel and avoid the object whether the object is another person, a car, or border border, whatever. That is the benefit of ABS. But some people buy the vehicle, see the ABS light on, and just say it's okay. They don't realize the safety aspect behind it. So these are some little things that customers should try to get themselves informed about. So when they go to buy new or used, find out what the features are, find out how to use the vehicle. Now, as Spear Motors, we train each of our customers on the vehicle. 
before they leave. So they know all the functions. We explain all these safety aspects, even some of the newer ones where the car can automatically brake itself to prevent an accident. And so the customer goes informed and understands you're paying for all these benefits. And these benefits at the end of the day are to protect you. You know, this is an investment in yourself, an investment in your own health and uh, your own safety. I mean, the car can help you up to X point, but you should try and, let's say, invest to make sure you buy a car that is safe and will do the job and keep you and your family safe. Gilbert Wabamuno, thank you so much for being with us on Revved Up. Thank you. Now, one of the things we love doing here on Revved Up is take you back in time. Show you the cars that our old great grand folks were actually enjoying before we had the more expensive ones, the more luxurious ones as well. Now, just last week, we showed you cars from 1900 to 1910. Now, this week, we're showing you the cars or the rides, like they would rather say, from 1910 to 1920 you probably are going to continue being surprised at the beauty of those classics. Take a look. My name's Denzel, and you're watching <laughs> Revved Up. This year, Isuzu released the latest version of the D-Max pickup truck, which originally debuted in 2012. This reliable utility vehicle still has the efficiency and power of the earlier model but with a modern and aesthetically commanding edge. The 3.0-litre diesel engine makes the D-Max a powerhouse automobile and only consumes a remarkable 13 kilometres to the litre. It's one of those cars that pretty much do everything. It is a commercial car, it's a family car, and mainly because of the specs that we shall be showing you later on. Now, some time back pickups were you know, I think you use from home to the farm and, you know, take the goats, take the, 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 the cassava to the farm as well. But things have changed. Now we have the luxurious ones, like this one, which of course is the sixth edition as well. We shall be going through it, know what its power is like, know what its engine is like, how, how speedy it is as well. And by the way, how conservative it is, plus the price as well. And to take us through this very car, as always, we're joined by the experts. This time around, I'm joined by Mr. Kawalia Douglas, who is uh, the marketing executive, Mark East Africa. How are you and welcome to the set. Beautiful machine. Thank you, thank you very much, Andrew. This, as you say, is a very beautiful vehicle. The Isuzu D-Max, sixth generation, we've come a long way in changing uh, lots of things uh, to make it look like it does right now. Uh, we've given it the projector headlamps, we've given it uh, the chrome touches that give it a lot of beauty a lot of uh, accentuation uh, for someone who's looking for lifestyle, someone looking for design, someone looking to show off a little bit when you drive out uh, of your home or out of your workplace. Something that will give you the value that you're looking for as a corporate, as a homeowner, as a commercial uh, person in the market, or even if you want to use it for construction, this is the car for you. The interior of the D-Max, due to its increased length and width, is spacious and comfortable with an array of features that add to its ease and practicality. So when you look at it from here, you'll realize that uh, I can get quick access to all my controls for air conditioning, 
uh, for the four-wheel drive mechanism for the transmission line as well as the various pockets that come with this vehicle uh, you can appreciate that we have lots of compartments for storage of everything we're now running uh, the four-wheel drive uh, rotary switch yeah. which is the shift on the fly which is much easier for you to operate from within your car you don't need to step out and uh, engage uh, there used to be a smaller gear around yeah, the, uh, the, the transmission you, you simply uh, rotate your rotary switch and you have your four-wheel drive engaged coming to my dashboard now this is a state of the art it's a multi-information display when i uh, switch on this uh, this baby of mine it quickly does a system self-check okay and it will quickly give you information about the vehicle and with this multi-information display, you have uh, a range of information sources. Yeah. You can tell uh, how much fuel you're running at, uh, how much the fuel you have, will, the distance will, it will help you cover. It will give you information like when is your next service, yeah. how long is uh, your oil, uh, how much will it take you to refill or to do the next service or to change your air, uh, the, your air element filter. I mean, uh, it gives you lots of information. It quickly gives you a summary of what your vehicle is looking at. It, it makes it a very, very easy car. Uh, not losing its functionality as a pickup but not too sophisticated for someone to be very careful and cautious when you're driving this car around. Its 3 liter engine gives you quite some amazing power up yeah. to 130 kilowatts and of course uh, its peaking capacity you'll experience a bit of that it has good speed good torque and good peak and so is its braking capacity it brakes quite efficiently, the anti-lock braking system yeah. and the EBD as well, electronic brake force distribution, making it the kind of car that will uh, survive any kind of uh, uh, driving experience. This, this is actually what I've been waiting for. When, when we get into the main road, uh, I want to know what, I want to feel what the acceleration of the Isuzu D-Max pickup is basically like. There we go. The D-Max can quickly pick from zero to 100 within six seconds <laughs> very easily and if you can look at my my speedometer right now yeah. it will actually give you all that and so will it give you the braking capacity Beautiful. and the abs as well comes yeah. into force very nicely so it's the kind of car that will give you whatever you're looking for sport luxury uh, work uh, you want to take it to the farm good car for you I mean, there's a couple of vehicles you drive and, and when you're speeding you feel like you almost get losing control of the car itself. Yes, um, with this D-Max you won't be able to feel any of that at all. It will give you proper, proper handling, yeah. proper comfort. You still have full control of the vehicle and while I'm at 100, we just did I, 100. Still have, I still have the control of the vehicle. The D-Max will give you all that and comfort as well. I think we've said enough. I think we've said enough, eh? Said enough, guys. <laughs> Said enough. Visually appealing, efficient, and powerful, the Isuzu D Max is the perfect utility vehicle for those who enjoy mixing strength with comfort. Because this truck is suitable for both off roading and urban scenarios, it is a versatile choice for a variety of buyers. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed uh, you know, looking at the specifications of the Isuzu D-Max pickup. We certainly have. It's such a beautiful car as well. Good for the farm that is off the road maybe and as well in town for the luxurious people out there. And it will only set you back 46,000 US dollars for you to have this in your garage. So what I'm going to do is uh, try and drive away. But do remember to as well join us on our Facebook. Get very, very interactive with us. Tell us which car, for example, you want on the show next week. And we shall try and find that car. And also take you through uh, the very car as well. That is it for this week's uh, Revved Up. Wow. Like they say, bye-bye. Next week on Revved Up.